Hey folks, welcome to the Houdini for MoGraph tutorial series. We'll be making Houdini more accessible for those who come from a less technical background and want to use the software for more stylized animations. The lessons will range in terms of experience levels, so if you're brand new to Houdini, you may want to keep an eye out for the ones with the basics label. Today's episode, let's talk VOPS. VOPS stands for Vector Operators. I personally feel that working with VOPS is one of the most fundamentally important parts of Houdini. Essentially, what this node does is allow you to manipulate attributes using node networks. Each node contains a tiny snippet of VEX, Houdini's coding language. As visual artists, it's great because you can see exactly what you're doing as opposed to typing out code. I'd say 90% of the time you can get away with using a VOPnet rather than having to actually code something, which is great. All right, let's dive into Houdini. We'll start by creating a sphere node. Set the primitive type to polygon and crank the frequency up to 20 so that we have plenty of geometry to work with. Drop down our point VOP node and make sure the view flag is on it and dive inside. Here you'll see the default globals. You can do a lot with just these, but keep in mind you can bring in more attributes as needed. You'll notice the different colors next to each parameter. These refer to the different types of attributes that you can use. The main three are green for vectors, this light blue for floats, and blue for integers. Let's start creating that little flame animation from the intro. We're going to drop down an anti-alias noise. There's other types of noises which we'll cover in future tutorials, but let's just use this one for now. Create an add node and wire in both the P for position value and the noise. Make sure to set the noise to 3D noise, then hook that up to an out position. Now you can start to see we got some noise on our sphere. Uh, you can play with the values to see how the noise affects the look. Increasing the amplitude or the roughness. Let's get the noise to ramp up from no noise at the bottom to a lot of noise at the top. To do this, we'll use a vector to float node, which separates the values of a float. Since we want to use the Y position, we'll drag this middle dot and create a fit range node. Our sphere has a radius of 1 from the origin, so we want to use the values negative 1 to 1 for the fit range inputs, which will then squeeze it into our output range here of 0 to 1. Drop down a multiply node after the noise and wire in our fit range. You can see that we started to make the ramp uh, affect where the noise goes. It's important to make your Houdini networks clean since they can get pretty complex. So we're going to do something called promoting parameters. This lets you affect values inside the VOPnet at the geometry level to avoid having to dive into these networks every time. Middle mouse click on the value you want and hit promote to parameters. We'll do this for all four of these noise attributes. Hop up to the geometry level and you can see that we have all our values up here ready to use. All right, let's get some animation going. When possible, it's great to animate without keyframes, so we'll use an expression, which you'll hear referred to as hscript in Houdini. So middle mouse dragging this Y offset, it's look, kind of looking what we're going for, so we're going to add our expression onto this. $f returns the current frame. So if we put that in, you can see it's, it's obviously way too fast. So I'm going to multiply it by 0.1, which that's looking nicer. I'm just messing around with the values here to get the look that I like and cool. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do for this is to add some color. I want the color to be affected by the amount of noise. Since noise can be both positive and negative, we're gonna drop down an absolute node. What this does is return all values as positive. So a noise value of negative one will become positive one. Noise goes across three dimensions, so we want to grab the highest value for each point possible. To do this, add another vector to float, and then connect all three to a maximum node. What this maximum node does is it takes any amount of inputs and returns the highest value possible. If you wire this into the CD export, Houdini's color value, you'll start to see what we're looking for. So create a ramp parameter node and add it to the maximum. Now come back up to the geometry level and you can adjust the colors to something you're happy with. And nice, okay. Add the red, nice glowy yellow. 
And now we have our little stylized flame. You can download the project files on our site, which has a few little extra bits of detail if you want to take this even further. Uh, but I hope you learned something from this. And until next time. Thank you.